It seems that everyone has their opinion about the events that are taking place in the world today. These opinions all rise from biblical prophecy. Hmm. Now the Jews have never accepted Jesus as their Messiah, and they're still looking for that event to happen. Readers should pay attention, as per the Old Testament, to what the coming kingdom of God would be like. Now for clarity, I'm speaking about the day of Yahweh. When the day of Yahweh comes, it's going to shock millions. Here's what we need to look for when the return of Yahweh happens. Now the Bible says in Isaiah, For behold, Yahweh will come with fire, and with his chariots, like a whirlwind, to render his anger with fury, and his rebuke with flames of fire. For by fire and by his sword Yahweh will judge all flesh. And the slain of Yahweh shall be many. Those who sanctify themselves and purify themselves to go to the gardens after an idol in the midst, eating swine's flesh and the abomination and the mouse <laughs> shall be consumed together, says Yahweh. For I know their works and their thoughts. It shall be that I will gather all nations and tongues and they shall come and see my glory, and I will set a sign among them, and those among them who escape I will send to the nations, to the coastlands afar off, who have not heard my fame nor seen my glory, and they shall declare my glory among the Gentiles. Then they shall bring all your brethren for an offering to Yahweh out of all the nations, on horses and in chariots and in litters, on mules and on camels, to my holy mountain Jerusalem, says Yahweh, as the children of Israel bring an offering in a clean vessel into the house of Yahweh. For as the new heavens and the new earth, which I will make, shall remain before me, says Yahweh, so shall your descendants and your name remain. And it shall come to pass that from one new moon to another and from one Sabbath to another, all flesh shall come to worship before me, says Yahweh. And they shall go forth and look upon the corpses of the men who have transgressed against me. For their worm does not die, and their fire is not quenched. They shall be an abhorrence to all flesh. Yeah, I guess cleaning that up is going to be a mess, isn't it? Here the verses speak of people gathering to worship Yahweh on the new moon and Sabbath. And somehow we Christians thought these things were abolished with the grace of God through Jesus. If it was abolished, how can this stuff from Isaiah be true today? The Old Testament dramatically speaks of Yahweh destroying all those who eat swine's flesh just before his coming kingdom. If it was abolished with the new covenant, why would it be reinstated in Yahweh's returning kingdom? Is he coming back? Is he coming back? <laughs> Now, if eating pork is okay to do today, why is Yahweh going to destroy those who eat it in these days? And as per Yahweh, the law has never really been abolished. And also, according to Yahweh, he doesn't ever change. So, by extension, he doesn't change his mind either. Hmm. He says when he comes back, the kingdom of Yahweh will be ruled by all of his laws. Altogether now, there were 613 laws covering every aspect of human behavior. Males had to be circumcised. Sabbaths had to be observed. People had to obey hundreds of dietary, social, and hygiene rules. All these regulations were tended to protect the Israelites from their neighbors' pagan influences. But no one could keep so many laws. So to address the people's sins, Yahweh set up a system of animal sacrifices. <sighs> where the people provided cattle, sheep, and doves to be killed. And for Yahweh, sin required blood sacrifices. Now, that system of animal sacrifices lasted hundreds of years. But even so, it was only temporary. Obviously, out of love, God the Father sent His only Son, Jesus, into the world. The new covenant would resolve the problem of sin and the transgression of law once and for all. Theologian Martin Luther called the contrast between the two covenants law versus gospel. 
A more familiar name is works versus grace. Now the question is this. Why would we ever want to revert back to the old covenant? The book of Hebrews says that the new covenant is superior to the old. Jesus is superior to Moses as a mediator. Now, Jesus is a high priest forever, seated next to the Father in heaven. And it's Jesus' sacrifice was once and for all teaching us how to obtain eternal life. Now, Yahweh left the people orphaned. Here's the verse. Then the glory of Yahweh went out from the threshold of the house and stood over the cherubim. And the cherubim lifted up their wings and mounted up from the earth before my eyes as they went out with the wheels beside them. But then the New Testament Jesus said, in John 14, If you love me, keep my commandments. I will ask the Father and he will give you another advocate to help you and to be with you forever. The Spirit of Truth. Now here's another verse going back to Isaiah. And it shall come to pass in the last days that the mountain of Yahweh's house shall be established in the top of the mountains and shall be exalted above the hills. And all nations shall flow into it. And many people shall go and say, Come ye, and let us go to the mountain of Yahweh, to the house of the Elohim of Jacob. And he will teach us of his ways, and we will walk in his paths. For out of Zion shall go forth the law and the word of Yahweh from Jerusalem. Zechariah says, And this shall be the plague with which Yahweh will strike all the people who fought against Jerusalem. Their flesh shall dissolve, and they shall stand on their feet, and their eyes shall dissolve in their sockets, and their tongue shall dissolve in their mouths. It shall come to pass in that day that the great panic from Yahweh will be among them. Everyone will seize the hand of his neighbor and will raise his hand against his neighbor's hand. Uh, Judah will also fight at Jerusalem, and the wealth of all the surrounding nations shall be gathered together gold, silver, and apparel in great abundance. Such shall be the plague on the horse and the mule, on the camel and the donkey, and all the cattle that will be in those camps. And so shall this plague be, and it shall come to pass that every one who is left of all the nations which came against Jerusalem shall go up from year to year to worship the king, Yahweh of hosts and to keep the Feast of Tabernacles. And it shall be that whichever of the families of of the earth do not come up to Jerusalem to worship the king, Yahweh of hosts, on them there will be no rain. If the family of Egypt will not come up and enter in, they shall have no rain. They shall receive the plague, which Yahweh strikes the nations who do not come to keep the Feast of Tabernacles. Now this shall be the punishment of Egypt and the punishment of all the nations that do not come up to keep the feast of tabernacles. In the day of holiness to Yahweh shall be engraved on the bells of the horses. The pots in Yahweh's house shall be like the bowls before the altar. Yes, every pot in Jerusalem and Judah shall be holiness to Yahweh of hosts. Every one who sacrifices shall come and take them and cook in them. In that day... <laughs> There shall no longer be a Canaanite in the house of Yahweh of hosts. Hoy, boy, did he not like the Canaanites. And most importantly, why would you think someone beside Yahweh is coming back? (laughs) Bottom line, all of his prophecy stuff in the Old Testament is actually pertaining to Yahweh's return. And I personally think the book of Revelations is actually speaking about the wrathful Yahweh's return and certainly not the loving Jesus in the second coming. Yahweh and Jesus are certainly not the same entity.